Hello, welcome to another episode of A7 Podcast. What happens when a Mexican comes to LA, begins to direct music videos, shoot photography, and make fashion? I'll tell you what you get. You get a beautiful, creative, powerful person. My good friend, Aisha Fernandez. How the fuck are you? Hello, hello. I'm good. How are you guys? You know, here, taking this podcast by storm, taking over the world here together with Jose. And <laughs> super honored that we have you here today. We've been talking about this for a while. And I'm yes. just really glad you're here today because we have so much to talk about. Jose said fashion. Mm-hmm. I want to kick us off with fashion. So I- tell us your story, Aisha. Um, okay, so I basically, my whole uh, trip, I don't know, my whole life started with fashion. I started um, at here at Fidum in doing studying merchandising and marketing for fashion. I've always been a stylistic person, but I really liked the whole branding idea and um, design concept parts of it. So yeah, that's how I started. I did college here in LA when I was 17. I moved here. Um, I was very young. I did it by myself and I loved it, honestly. I loved it so much and yeah, I've always been a fashionable person, which has helped every place in my career. Um, yeah. So uh, aside from obviously fashion being part of your identity, what else influenced you or inspired you to be in fashion whatsoever or just in general? Honestly, I don't really have any specific uh, inspirations other than like streetwear. Uh, my culture really inspires me and in the colors parts about it. Um, I think I've always just been, um, into like pop culture and, um, I don't know. And uh, it just really comes naturally to me. I like mixing shapes and figures a lot and silhouettes. Um, so it's one of those things that you were just gifted with. You just see it in a day to day. Yeah, I guess. And I, I was also studied like textile fashion. So I'm really into the sense science parts of it. Um, you know, like right now I'm wearing some leather and you can see it, but I'm also wearing uh, cotton right here. The know. contrast of a fabric. Of fabrics, yeah. yeah it's, it's, a, a, it's like a contrast of textures, you know. It's, yeah. You know, that's pretty interesting. I was in, I, I used to design watches for for uh, fas- for a brand. So mm-hmm. like Ed Hardy, Tap Out, Original Penguin. Vivian Westwood was one of their bigger oh ones. Oh, my God. Yeah, we did some stuff for Vivian Westwood. So um, it's crazy how, how that stuff is priced and all, stuff, and all that stuff. But again, fashion has a big influence to it. Yeah, and nowadays, especially in L.A., the whole uh, people, like everybody in L.A. is surrounded by fashion and uh, style, art. So it's really nice to be in a world surrounded by just like artistic yeah. people. <clears throat> and for example, for me, um, working with so many brands, it, it, it made me kind of a reptilian in a sense. You know, like uh, I got to adapt for each brand because every brand is different you know Vivian Westwood was very particular she had her own really styling they had guidelines because when you do licenses you don't really design your own stuff you got to design according to what they're doing you get me and then I had to go from for example Vivian Westwood to an Ed Hardy product to a tap out product so it made me a reptile kind of in the sense of the design so with that being said um what do you think made you this, this, you know, what influenced you to do that kind of design, like other than streetwear and all that stuff? Obviously, uh, it's hard to adapt to different design styles. So you kind of created your own. And how did you come about that? Um, so I, I had a like really interesting childhood. I, I had a producer mom, so I was always with uh, like old grown ups and stuff like that. I also traveled a lot, so I think I was able to have different, like, points of view, different from, like, the normal people that were around me. I was able to feed from, like, the arts in Paris, Italy. I lived in France for a little bit, too. Perspectives. Yeah, exactly. Um, So I think that just kind of gave me a different perspective in the way that I dress. And I also just, like, the way that I feel transmits through the way that I look. Most of the time. So your outfits are defined by emotions every Absolutely. day? Absolutely, yes. Like, if I am feeling really sad, you're probably going to see me wearing a lot of, like, dark makeup. And, like, today I'm feeling happy, so I have some bright colors. I've also recently really started, like, I read this article about how colors uh, change the way that you look. Yeah. And that how people, like, perceive you. Of course. Yeah, so, like, I was a person that was always wearing black. And, like, I consider, I consider it, like, classy. But I've also seen that, like... It 
could like people could consider you scary or like i don't know bossy and unwelcoming you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. all these type of things and like us film people like we're always wearing black like it's like, like our staple color so like for me it's always been normal but i've been trying to re like reach out and do other colors and it actually people have been more welcoming yeah i can see that why <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah colors attract people right it's yeah like exactly. neon colors and that stuff you're like yeah. look at ravers Wee! <laughs> i uh one thing that i find crazy about fashion is how there are like trends and stuff that become fashion so for example the the cholo look the chola la gangster look but that's <laughs> you know that's totally influenced yeah 100 percent influence no but what's it called um you know the the 90s thing with the flannels and everything it's it's big fashion in japan yeah definitely. and in sweden and stuff like that you get me and then now uh i come from you know metal and punk background and metal and punk now really influences fashion in fact punk actually well if the, for those people who argue that the sex pistols are the original punk band <laughs> Uh, what's oh, it called? Shit. They started as a uh, they started as a project for fashion. Yeah. You're getting serious, of, Jose. Yeah, it was a bunch of fashion designers that actually kind of made their look, you know, and a bunch of people started following and stuff like that. And then nowadays, you see Kanye West, Kim Kardashian wearing morbid angel patches, Slayer, like really like heavy bands, you know, that before would never be around. Lady Gaga would do the whole studded jackets. Like yeah. I swear, like the the jacket that Lady Gaga wears in the telephone music video, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I've seen it on somebody. <laughs> like I've seen it in a show somewhere, and then I'm like, isn't that that one chick's jacket? And she's wearing it, you know? But it's, yeah, it's crazy how all these little trends, you know, then become, like, a part of the fashion yeah, world. It, in, in fashion, there's a saying that uh, fashion repeats itself. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle. You know, things just come about, they get old, they get vintage, it comes back to a cycle, becomes modern again, and so on and so forth. That's what happened with the 70s, it's happening again now. Yeah. You know, so all that, it's just all designed to be that way, dude. It's really crazy. I think for me, the biggest transition for fashion was right there in like the early 2000s when we went from like extremely graphic tees mm -hmm. to a very monotone color kind of kind of like look you know yeah. simple tea simple pants simple yeah shirt. we like the neutrals now i yeah. mean honestly talking about that my jacket is literally my mom's and she <laughs> got this when she was like probably my age wow and i wear like most of my pieces are my grandma's my mom's and Th all that yeah. stuff so that's yeah. awesome that's something that did come good from our current generations uh thrift shopping yeah dude clothes gets recycled yeah well now and i love it you know because it really it makes a look completely different you get me? You can't get the same looks that they yeah, have. Yeah, and we kind of got rid of fast fashion, which is amazing because it helps the environment as well. So mm -hmm. I love that we're being resourceful and like helping the environment because that's really important. I, I hope people actually mean that because most people don't give a fuck. It's so really important yeah. to like take care of the environment, please. Yeah. Don't buy You only have fashion. one earth, guys. Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, one thing that I find crazy is that Dr. Martens were for a long time only worn by like punks and, you know, like metalheads oh and God, stuff like yeah. And now all the trendy, cute little girls are all wearing docks. Yeah, like, oh, and shit. You I got, got, you got docks on right now. Yeah, exactly. Shoe cam, shoe cam. My, <laughs> I got my first pairs of docks when I was eight years old and I wow. still have them. I still wow. wear them every single they day. They still fit? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking old, but yeah. Jesus, I can't believe that. A good pair of docks literally will last you years. Yeah, but the fact yeah. that it still yeah. fits I from mean, eight years old is what i'm like whoa <laughs> i mean you don't really grow your feet don't really grow that oh well, they much. do i've been i've i was like a size five when i was eight years old yeah i don't know maybe my mom bought them bigger <laughs> <laughs> well that's impressive so i actually had one more question for you here yeah uh, out of your whole fashion experience or your whole fashion um you could say um part of your life or career what was your favorite experience mm, so i when I was in college, I had the opportunity to create a fashion magazine. Nice. And um, it was called ATG. Shout out ATG. Um, yeah, that was such a good experience. I honestly got to meet so many people, and I, we created a community full of... Uh, so our, our um, mission statement was set, uh, called Where the Misfits Fit. So it was more of like uh, people were able to like dress up as however they wanted to and they were still welcomed in our environment. Yeah. So that was really awesome. We got a lot of uh, creative people and artists and people that would just come to us and be like, I love that you guys give us a safe space. So that was an awesome experience. I loved being able to create that for others. That's pretty awesome. Jose, yeah. do you have a favorite fashion experience? <laughs> my favorite fashion experience it's funny because you think i guess you might say you don't have one but i could think of one of you that you have that you don't realize that is part of fashion uh which one your billboard 
Oh, yeah. wait, what billboard? That we did do that. Huh? Yeah, yeah, your Dada Boy <laughs> billboard. Even though yeah. it was an album cover, that was a statement in fashion because you were creating an image for somebody. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so that's a big deal, bro. Like an ad, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. billboard is awesome. Yeah. So, was in, uh, other than that, I mean, West LA too. Yeah. Now nice. that I've said that, do you? Can you think of another? Can I think of another? Fashion statements. Come on. Fashion You'll be statements. doing fashion statements all the time. <laughs> 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 well, come on. You can think of one. Uh, the only fashion statement thing, uh, what's it called? I, I'll get into a little rant. Uh, when I used to play in a black metal band, yeah, I was really into Lady Gaga. Oh, wow. And I was the singer of this black metal band, right? And I, uh, I always, like, I was like, I don't, like, I'm I doing this because, yeah, like, I'm just doing this because I love music. You get me? I mean, I yeah. love this particular type of music, but I'm like, I'm never going to get famous off of this. You know, this is just fun. Yeah. And so I would wear, like, Lady Gaga shirts on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, fools would be like, oh, that guy's gay. And I'm like, and <laughs> That's messed up. And I'd be like, bro, like, my, my band members would get so mad. But I'm like, bro, but they're talking about us, no? Yeah, yeah. that's a you know? big statement right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, and this was in a time when people were really closed mind off in the scene. You know, now that people are a little more open. But back in those days, like, people were like, no, bro, like, don't do that. That's embarrassing. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, everybody's going to be judgmental. Everybody's yeah. going to have a common sometime and point, right? But that's funny. I like that. I like that you see that as a fashion statement because it definitely was. It is. Yeah. Such a <laughs> it definitely statement. was. Gaga, shout out Lady Gaga. Yeah, shout Lady, out Gaga, Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga, <laughs> shout you out for sure. Yeah. Um, what's it called? Uh, for me, I had an experience once with uh, the Ed Hardy brand where they needed an ad. Um, I didn't even know what it was for. Right? They just told Wait, me. I have a question. Yes. Is Ed Hardy like still cool? No, he's not. <laughs> he was. He stopped being cool a long time ago. But I'm not gonna lie. That company made money from that mm-hmm, guy. Mm-hmm. They made so much, dude. Uh, there was the reason why we needed a, uh, an ad was because of there's this uh, 12 collection watches that I d- that I designed. It was pretty much like um, there looked like some like Michael Kors shit. It was definitely a knockoff, but with Ed Hardy on it, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely, it was an easy design, but that's what they wanted. So I did 12 designs. And that shit blew up in Europe. And I'm talking blew up. We sold 100,000 units in our first Jesus. shipment. And, we had, and then their second shipment was 250,000. Wow. And we sold that off too. So it was a huge fucking production. And they wanted an ad. So I designed this ad of the, the watches kind of like soldier style, like lined up. And then some cool like electronic uh, fucking uh, design in the background because I was really into electro- electronic music back then. Mm. So I did it quickly. I swear to God, that, that ad took me like 20 minutes. It turns out that that ad ended up on top uh, in an in a ad in Hello Magazine. It ended up in an ad in Europe. I think it was in France where it ended up. And it ended up in People Magazine. Wow. wow. And I didn't even freaking know, bro. The, <laughs> the only way I found out is because uh, they sent us a shipment saying thank you, and they sent two copies of the magazine. I still have the copy of the magazine nice. here. It's one of those Hello Magazines from... Wait, uh, do you have it at... We, the, yeah. Disposable right now, no, but I know where it is. So I can okay. show it to you for sure. <laughs> I want to see it. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an ad in a Hello magazine, that big old freaking magazine. That's so cool. And I, keep, I kept it for that reason. I'm like, yeah. I didn't know it was that big of a deal until later on, mm-hmm. but it was definitely a pretty cool experience of just seeing my ad and people actually liking it. And I didn't ever got the picture of the billboard, which I'm upset about, but it was out there. Nice. <laughs> it was there. It was there. But yeah, that was fun. Wa- designing watches was really fun. I kind of miss it, but Apple Watch, damn you. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jose, I mean, uh, Aisha, I'm sorry. <laughs> you said that uh, your mom was a producer, right? Yes. So, uh, would that be why you jumped into film? Um, I mean, honestly, no, not really. Like, I grew up hating it and, like, cursing the film industry because <laughs> it just, like, always took me away from my mom. You know, so as a kid, I like hated it and I was like, "Ah, I'm never going to work like this. I'm never going to be on set for this many hours. Um, But it always I was always there. So I think when I came here and I started doing fashion and I also like I've always been doing photography. um, It just came to me like really naturally. And my friends were like, trust me with their visions and they would just be like, oh, like you can do it. Right. Like you can do my music video. And I would just be like, I mean, I, I know how to do it. So I guess I could, I could, you know, and that's really just like how it happened. And then I slowly started like recognizing that I had all this knowledge and I was like, well, 
I was there the whole time. Like, I know how to make a budget. I know how to do a pre-production call, a schedule. Like, I... I would, I would, I would be my mom's assistant like, yeah. mm-hmm. most of the time. So, so subconsciously, she taught you what you know. Yeah, and it's weird because <laughs> I really never wanted it, but it was like it just it, came it, to look, me. Look, everybody's parents pat something down. Yeah, everybody does. Let it be a good thing at least. Of course, <laughs> and I, I'm so grateful. Like I remember now that I know all these people, and I go back and they see me like grown up now. They're like you're awesome like you were meant to do this and that's like you know you were sculpted to do this yeah and it's crazy because as a like a human i wouldn't recognize that even myself until like it just showed up so i'm grateful for like it it's happening so i know that you and jose have had a lot of projects together. oh yeah so jose why don't you tell me what was your favorite project that you worked together with aisha <laughs> that's hard I, I yeah. know I know you guys have it's a lot like, we always have fun doing our projects I yeah. think which, so every which, experience is different which I think we should always be thankful for that that we could get to get up and work every day and say that we had fun doing it yeah, yeah. nobody not really like a lot of people have this so we're blessed people hate mm-hmm. working up in the morning sometimes yeah we don't have to <laughs> um Aisha and I, what's it called, met through a project, actually. So the person that brought us together is Mac Glitzy. Shout out to Mac Glitzy. Shout out, Mac. And um, we were actually shooting something for Mac. We were were doing, like, a a couple of social media videos. And uh, Mac always likes to get other people to come out and say a few words. He has, like, a quick little script. And uh, that's where we met Aisha. Aisha came out and talked about networking, like, Nine out of ten times, the people that we hire out to do these little social videos, like, you know, they come, they say hi, they say bye, you know, and then we never see them again. Aisha was like, remember? And she was like, I have a magazine. (laughs) I also do videos. You should let me do your next video. Oh, I remember now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like part of the cast. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I had a magazine back then and I was part of like, I was more like goth emo in that moment. Like my style was very um, alternative and like, yeah, just more intense. So I think Mac. I definitely met you in your black wearing era. Absolutely. (laughs) And I had like red hair. You had the red hair. You know, so that was like my brand back then. So yeah, that was good times, honestly. Yeah. (laughs) Reminiscing, reminiscing. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so Mac was telling me, uh, it looks like you need some help because I was doing like six people's jobs. So I was like, yeah, I definitely need some help. So Max said, uh, that girl from the other shoot, Aisha, actually said she wants to help us. She did this one video um, and it looks really good. And I think it would it'd be a good for the team. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let's get it. And so we did it. You were actually supposed to come that day, but well, you didn't want to wake no, up. No, 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 Bottom what day of was the this? ocean. Oh, screw you. I, <laughs> <laughs> this is the second time he throws it in my face. No, it's true. <laughs> I was there too. No, no. He told me at midnight the night before. Mm. I did not. I yeah. told you like two days before. That, Honestly, no. I don't mind. I, it's fine. It all worked out at the end of the day. Yeah, but he still went to share before. <laughs> and then, we talked uh, about it before. We talked fun about it fun before. fact, uh, this white camera is the first Sony camera that Aisha ever ever touched. We put oh, it on a, I put it on a roller. You touched my camera and I didn't know. I <laughs> literally used your stabilizer and yeah. I had mm-hmm. never even used a stabilizer. You want to know something funny about that stabilizer? Jose what? broke it two weeks later. No way. <laughs> At least it wasn't me. At least it wasn't me. <laughs> no, it's okay. It got I repaired. was so excited and I was so like, this is like literally the first times that I was like do, using a camera to shoot my own project. I was like, um, when when I was first talking to you, I was like, you've used cameras before, right? You've done all this. Shit. Yes, 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 yes. Of course, of course. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, here, you know how to set up every, everything, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, we were literally on set, like we're waiting for the sun to rise. I'm like, okay, cool. At the beach. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, quick rundown. You do this, you do that. And she picked it up fucking fast. In fact, she got a lot of great, uh, she was B camera. She got a lot of good footage. A lot, a lot Shout of Shout out footage. to that A6500 because that thing has got us through a lot of things. Yeah, you tore, putting in work. You tore with it. I did take you it on shot tour. a few music videos with yeah. it. Dude, that camera's gone through hell. We love your camera. <laughs> that's why we don't talk about you on set. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you know. Yeah, no, that's crazy. I actually really enjoyed that. And mm-hmm. Jose actually took his shoes off to go take the shot. He was like, I'm going to do everything for the shot. Took his <laughs> shoes off, 
pulled up his jeans and got the amazing shot. Yeah, got in the cold water at like six in the morning. Six in the morning, yeah. Yeah. What what Jose doesn't have in time control, he has in balls. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, and I really looked up to him. Like that day, I think, is the day that we connected. And I started working with him afterwards because I was like, he understands the fucking vision and I want him on my set, you know? So it was good. It was good. I, I really liked having that experience. The first time I worked with a Jose, he made me cut a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we oh, stabbed well, and wait. burned a Bible. The, and the worst part about it is that, like, I, I, I'm not, like, I don't, I'm not going to say I'm Christian. I'm not going to talk about that because I'm not really that religious or anything, right? <laughs> but I'm really not. But but I, there's a line. There's a line I don't want to cross, oh right? Oh, my God. But, but it was so funny because I'm seeing these people struggle with it. Like, they don't know what they're doing. They're trying to figure this out. Yeah. And, and Why I, were you cutting it? Okay, so we, we get hired for a black metal band. And uh, their ideas are, the, the, the how I sold it to Alex is I'm like, you're going to get to shoot a naked chick. That's not even true. That's not even true. That's it was true. true. It's true. That's not even true. Did you guys shoot a naked chick? I did. Yes. I, have, I still have the photos. They're so good. Yeah, he printed him. Dude, has that, them hanging in the wall. That's a really good photo. You got to admit, for my first shoot. Wait, yeah. there, the solid. ones in the wall? The one with the girl on the right with the horns. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was my first shoot with oh, Jose. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, That's they yeah. awesome. Out, they came out really good. Yeah, they but, came out dope. But my whole dilemma is was the Bible. Because they this is like they were like a little over, right? But the funny thing is that they're struggling to make a cut on this Bible and found a way to squeeze out the uh, the blood. blood. So, so we we cut a hole in the middle of the Bible and put a blood packet in there. <laughs> but and then but these dudes bought like the most expensive Bible. They bought like a like top tier Bible, Bible. So the they had like legit leather on it. So when they when they were beginning oh to cut, God. it would not like cut. <laughs> but the issue was trying to get it to work, and yeah. I'm like, I didn't want to be a part of it. But I'm like seeing everybody You're like, struggle. Guys, come on! Yeah, I, I saw everybody struggle, so I'm like, fuck, I have to do sense. it. So I'd be like, all right, get out of my way. And I literally like five minutes. I like came up with some jigged idea on how to do it, and I'm like, so now someone just got to get underneath and squeeze. That's all you got to do. And I'm like, fuck, I can't believe I'm part of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so, um. For that part, Alex stayed. For the naked girl, Alex stayed. Pouring blood on that naked girl's pussy, Alex stayed. That was not, nah, not yeah. even, that's messed up. And then, messed up. But what's it called? When we finally go to by the LA River and we're like, okay, now we're going to burn it. Alex was like, oh, you know what? My mom, uh, she actually needs me to pick her up. So uh, I got to go. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, no. I like, like look at the uh, band afterwards and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, his mom didn't need me to pick him up. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm, all, I'm all for the arts, but I ain't burning a Bible. Y'all uh, <laughs> I do not. No I wouldn't burn here. a Bible either. I don't think my mom would not like that. Yeah. It's not even about liking it. For it's art. Just, I was conflicted. That's I was like morally conflicted. You guys were like, it's already bleeding. Why does it have to burn? Yeah. 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 No. I mean, if you had the opportunity to work on The Exorcist. You get me? But that's different. That's a How? movie. That's a movie. This it's is a f- music video. It's fantasy. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like stupid people doing stupid shit. Yeah, it's know? just, it's uh, fantasy. It's a theme. It's a, you know, like. I'll be, I'll yeah. be an exorcist. I just won't cut a Bible. Or, or I mean, I won't burn a Bible. <laughs> I'll like, cut it though. Like, if you really think about it, like, burning Bibles hurts less people than, you know, promoting, like, a gangster music video. That kind of, like, hurts more people. True. Than, this you is know? true. But, but I still won't burn a Bible. <laughs> anyway, so I don't that's know what we if did. I would burn a Bible. You guys are pussies. Would you burn a Bible? I got tatted (laughs) Satan all over my body, so I have no problems (laughs) burning a Bible. (laughs) I do not. (laughs) No, for me. I had had to get down. Okay, hey, but let the record That's show. That's a it good was the first shoot. Time. I mean, at least you didn't run away. You're still here. No, 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 not know? even that. A seven. The only thing that day that they needed to shoot was that last scene. Mm-hmm. So it's it wasn't like I walked away from. The it was. Project. It was the final. Film. Understandable yeah. then. Yeah. So I'm like, you guys got this. Uh, the, the only thing that Alex is down on light on fire are these blunts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. I like that. I like that transition so that good. good. <laughs> yeah. So good. A plus. He like yeah. had it on his hand and was waiting for the perfect moment. It really was. Mm-hmm. Well, I, anyways. Music videos with you guys have always been a blast. Yeah. I've, I've been part of you. I've been part of a few. We had videos. blood in some of our music videos. We did Vampiros, and that was like our bloodiest shoot ever. Now, that that's a great example. And I was, uh, this was Aisha's, was that your first like big thing that you're handling on your own? Because I remember like just like being with you through a lot with it because I was like, poor girl. Uh, I'm like, if I was directing this, I'd like go in and help, but I didn't want to step all over your feet. You get me? I'm like, yeah. this is your project. I want you to kind of just handle it on your own. You I know? think it was a big, like it just had a lot of people involved that didn't know what to do. I was used to working with an artist that was just mm-hmm. like, 
focus like they know their song they know what they're doing they know how to perform blah 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 but this one was like random skater boys that were like acting as vampires mm -hmm. so that was like yeah it was fucking scary to me i mean it wasn't scary it was tricky and i enjoyed it i think we did a good job after all like but it was more of like unprepared and random like we didn't really plan the shots like we didn't know the guys that we were like dealing with no <laughs> no you guys planned this what's it called <laughs> what happened was that you guys didn't plan that who these kids were so what it was is what these kids were essentially 16 year old me's which were a bunch of skating drinking pot smoking fucking rebels you get me and they're used to working with artists and like i'm not gonna say nothing but there, there seemed to be some type of like like fetishes, fetishization of these kids oh. like well, yeah on, definitely on a part you know like, so yeah we kind of just like casted like influencers on the internet and like not real actors mm -hmm. and that was the main issue you know like yeah and so these kids were not <laughs> listening but what's it called overall i mean i made them do crazy things yeah just i don't things know that if they you didn't remember do. Yeah. the way that i was directing them was pretty insane because yeah. i i was like all right you guys want to go with the flow fine like i'll go with the flow jose you shoot this you guys climb that ladder you know and i yeah. made them climb like construction sites and i made them fight and i made them skate and like do all this crazy shit because it was not like We were just trying to get them being cool, but like wearing fangs, so, I guess. <laughs> so the, the message here is that if they, if they hire Arish Aisha, get insurance. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the real lesson yeah. the real lesson of it all is um, uh, what's it called? Don't Testing. don't break under pressure. Never break under yeah. pressure because. Honestly, uh, you know, and I give kudos to you, Aisha, because that was a very chaotic day. Like I was there stressing for you. And I love how you handle it uh, all in the end. You get me? You did a great job. You picked up the slack and you were able to create magic out of chaos. And Thank you. for anybody out there, if you're shooting something and it seems like it's going wrong, keep at it. Keep at it because the footage in the end might surprise you. Never stop. Put your pride aside and just get the footage. Get it going and then you know work on it later you'll be fine yeah Adesha. honestly yeah that's kind of how i saw it at the moment i was like i trust jose if anything like we'll fucking cut this shit together and make it look good so that's what we did honestly that's what we did and i definitely support that thing yeah i mean if you're a creative person that's literally part of what you're doing that's half of the things yeah. that you're doing mm -hmm. especially in music videos where it's like half performance half creativity like you kind of just have to act on the spot and like work with the resources that you have around you know because like you don't really have big budgets when it comes to these productions yeah. so yeah work with what you have and create art you know yeah. never stop don't give up you get me like if, if something no matter how much you plan Something will go wrong. Something will not be right. Always. Always. No matter what. No matter what it might be. It might be something as simple as a lens. It might be something as simple as a filter or a light or a cable. It could be so many things. Oh, yeah. No matter what comes up, always keep going. Yeah. It, and, like, do what you love. You know, remember you're here because you love the craft and, like, work your way around it. That would also make you a better director, a better producer, a better camera person. Because... Now that that went that, that you went through that, whatever you forgot or whatever went wrong, you're going to think about it now. You're going to think about uh, having a second one or a third one or maybe something in the car that you keep at all times because you experienced that mistake. You get me? One of the things that I always forget is an HDMI cable. No. <laughs> you get me? And, and I bring <clears throat> my gimbal and my setup and all this shit, but I can't use my screen, which literally fucks with my workflow. Yeah. You, you don't want to look in his little screen. Exactly. You need a monitor. So, but I, I, But it's not the end of the world. So you, instead of being mad or upset or anything, fucking throw that shit aside. Get your iPad and connect it to the Bluetooth. And, or just know? use the little screen. There's yeah. options. You True. Get me? There's yeah. options. The whole point is that one thing cannot make or break something. You get me? A make or break has to be a huge deal. You get me? And as a photographer, you're never going to get the weather that you want. Yeah. If you want something to shoot it, or you want to shoot something, I'm sorry. You're going to have to go to that place several times. Yeah, look at the weather look right at, now in L.A. It sucks. It sucks. It's uh, so different. So we did the Vampiros thing. My personal favorite project from you, Isha, that I just love the look and everything. I love butterflies. Butterflies was hella fun. 
hella dope. Um, I was actually, that was a hard project. Really? Yeah, because we had a whole plan for another location, and then the location changed. This is true. I don't know if you remember that, but I, I had a whole plan for it, and I wanted to, like, switch rooms mm -hmm. and make it, like, a wanner, you know? And then Mac and Baby Punk couldn't, like, I don't know, the scheduling was off, so the location had to change, and I had to change my whole, like, visual style for it. And it was, like, this set that had, like really small tight rooms yeah so we worked tight. with it like we absolutely like killed it and like worked with it but for me personally it was hard because it changed the whole vision that i had for it yeah yeah but you had, interesting but you adapted of course and yeah you didn't give up. we have to adapt and yeah you didn't give up and you pushed through and you delivered yeah, yeah. and then it has one of the this takes that yeah. Are like banned those are, those from are some the internet, <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. Topic. I mean, you can't, you know, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube, wherever you post, someone's gonna like stop you from your creativity. Yeah. So, so the butterfly videos, uh, <laughs> you have to tell me, uh, yeah, have to say yeah, it. what's it called? Um, we we had uh, the guy who was renting my office, a close friend of mine, named also named Jose. Shout uh, out, Jose, yeah. you know who you are. Uh, the we couldn't Put find the uh, shot right here. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hot dog shot. Yeah. Oh my God, That's what fun. we're talking dude, about. Really, you're really gonna do this to him? I'm gonna do this. Yeah, dude, because it was funny. I tried, for the record, I tried to stop him. <laughs> I tried to stop him. I was there editing, and I said, "Put it in there." So. Yeah, she was. She was in charge of that project. <laughs> I was directing. Anyway, that first shit. of all, first of all, okay. So wait, wait, wait. Like, Let me get this clear. Are you saying that you had no control over it, and the director? Forced you into this? I forced him. Yeah. So this uh, is what's it called? Because he, he begged me. He definitely right, so begged let me. Let me ask you: this. Is this you your legal cop out? You never told me this, out? though. Huh? Is this your legal cop out? Man, I, at the end of the day, you know I don't give a fuck. Fuck. It was funny, bro. It was I didn't know funny. it was such a big deal. Yeah. Honestly, like I honestly, I'm sorry that it was a big deal for you. If I knew, I probably would have just not put it in there. But it was too good. But let's. With that it being was too said, good, brother. With, with that being said, let's review the footage. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> okay, so uh, what's it called? First of all, he made up that idea. He was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if I just eat this hot dog? And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah go for it. We're just like going on random shit, just getting B-roll. He liked his suit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and anyways, uh, what's <laughs> we're editing it, and I look at the clip, and like, Aisha, how long did I laugh? <laughs> like I literally stopped I could not stop laughing For like 10 minutes dude Like And I'm like No we can't do this And I Aisha was, was like, like It's necessary yeah. <laughs> We need it <laughs> I feel so bad for laughing. He's gonna come after me. No, too. it was it like it's the vision. Like you know, as a director that has like the location changed and this is your starring shot. Like you really just have to go with it. It's about a pop up. Shot. It's oh, about it's a about to show up. Oh, no. We got the wide. That's why we, we got, got the wide. We got the wide. We got the wide. Yeah. Okay, Dude, so it's coming. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. So that's the hot dog. Um, <laughs> this lady was awesome too. Shout yeah. out to you. Oh, it, it already passed. Actually. No, 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 no. It's about to pass right yeah. now, right okay, now, right wait. now. Watch. Look, right now. Wow. So we love this lady. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so good, so good, so Amazing good. Amazing genius. We so love sorry. it. Genius. We love it. I fucking love it. I feel bad for being the platform now. <laughs> Baby Punk, Mike Litsy, you guys outdid yourselves. Look, like. the, mu the music videos always come out on point. Everything is always a vision, and everybody is always there to deliver. So you guys are amazing. Yeah, both of you. Thank I tell Jose you. every day, I don't see you all the time. So I, I'm glad you're here to tell you that you're amazing. I'm working what you on do. my craft. And, and we see it. That's why you're MIA. You're working. Yeah, you're literally. So let's keep it up. Yeah. So uh, what's it called? From that, we also worked on something for a group called Body Party. And that's I, how I met Chloe and then started seeing the rest of Aisha's work. Yeah. So Chloe, shout out Chloe <laughs> Titus. Shout out to Chloe. Honestly, one of the first people that believed in me as a director, you know, it was really crazy the way I met her. You guys want to know? I don't know if you know. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, so I was still doing my magazine back then. So I was like, cool, you know, like I had shit going on. And then like one day I, I had watched her show because Chloe has a show at this in, on Netflix that's called um, Kitten. No, 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 no. Um. <laughs> Nasty Cherry. Mm -hmm. I'm with a band. 
And for like all the fans of Charlie XCX, maybe you guys know Charlie XCX. Yep. So she created this band, and the whole like show is a reality show about like Charlie creating this band, and Chloe is the guitarist. So I knew Chloe because I watched the show during the pandemic, and um, I was a fan. You know, like I really liked her as a person, and I also liked her band, which was named Kitten. Um, so I just followed her on Instagram and I would watch her stuff during the pandemic. And then one day, randomly, out of nowhere, she DM'd me. How and she that, was... How did that feel? Bro, I was... So, like, she... So this was the message. The message was like, hey, I'm doing a shoot tomorrow and I need an assistant. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Hey, wait, wait, let the record show that it's better than the 50 bucks that Data Boy told us. Bro, I would I honestly, <laughs> just to, just to be I would have done it for free. Yeah. I'm you glad. You, I'm, look, I understand that sometimes you just love the artist. At this just, point, yeah, yeah. like and now like a, I'd laugh about it, but at that point, I would have done it well, for free. It's, it's like yeah. almost for you as an honor, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I completely get it. I completely get it. But with that being said, our, our last uh, guest was telling us about some, like, Jose did a production for them. Yeah. And uh, some of his friends, like, loved it. Yeah. And they're like, um, can we get his information so we could hire him? So Jose gets an email, and the email's like, hey, we have this idea. We're going to do this and that. We have 50 bucks. Well, for a whole music <laughs> video. For a whole music yeah, video. Yeah, see, people be doing this shit to us. That's like, not even the hard that's drive. That's true. No, like, that's <laughs> true, though. Like, I deal with people. Somebody was, like, I don't want to name this. I'm not going to shout out do anybody. It, do it, do it, do it. Mm -hmm. Shout out to nobody, but... I was just, I just got pitched for a music video like a day ago and they were like, I'll pay you with clothes. Wow. I'm like, like? <laughs> I'm like, yo, my fucking closet's like this boarding. I can't fit any clothes what, it, in there. I need money, <laughs> yo. Like, was, no. Was it Balenciaga or something at least? No, he like makes clothes. So oh, like, hell. oh my God. You know, I was like, like I don't know how to feel about this because I love the art and like I would do it for all the people that I believe in at this but at the same time I have to fucking make a living of course. yeah yeah you know? I mean the, with the clothes thing though is sometimes you could do a like I've done I mean fun, collaboration yeah, you know what I mean but, like, but that's understood from the beginning you know no I don't need clothes like <laughs> yeah. sorry I got, enough, I got enough I need yeah. money yeah yeah yo you gotta pay your artists man you gotta you pay have your to. creators man yeah pay your people and like understand that we all do what we do because that's what we make our living. And if you make art, I'll buy your art. And I'll, like, buy your songs and I'll watch your videos and I'll do all that uh, stuff, Hey, a too. share is free. You know? You know mm -hmm. A like is free. Yeah. You don't like, all that stuff. I will support, but you gotta support me, too. And I mm -hmm. think that most people that work with me understand that. Like, we we all communicate as people and we know, like, you. this is how you live off. This is what I live off. But um, I don't know. Yeah, there's some crazy shit around. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. There's some shitty ass clients out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know yeah. what? We take every inquiry seriously because mm -hmm. that's part of the business. Um, we could say no. And we, we do all the time. Yeah, and that's what I'm learning also, too. You know, like to say no. Yeah. You got yeah. to wager your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know I mean? Me and Jose sit down a lot and we're talking about pricing. And I'm like, well, Jose, let's break it down. You, know, you always have to bring it down for whoever you're doing. Yeah. You know, how many hours are you shooting? Oh, we're just, yeah. sh we're just shooting for four hours. Well, that sounds like an easy day to you. How much time are you editing? Editing. Yeah. Oh, damn. Well, maybe like 16, 24 hours. All right. How much did you charge him? X amount. Jose yeah. has just such a pure heart. Yeah, though. yeah, but but I'm I over know, here being like I'm I'm over here being his little devil on the side saying no, that's good charge like, more. Somebody <laughs> has to take care. No, it's yeah. good. I appreciate that because I have people that tell me that too. And again, I would do it for free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just for the love of art. And I understand you because you've done shit for me. Yeah. For free. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? So you do so many things. So, like, I know you've been doing photography. I know you're doing music videos. I know you're doing editing. You're in film school right now. But the thing that always shocked me, and I was always like, what the fuck, you do that? How do, how do you even have time for this? Is that you also manage a lot of things, right? Yeah, I manage uh, bands. What else? <laughs> one band? No, no, no. I manage bands, and uh, we have a record label that's called PSY, PSY Sound, which stands for Pussy. Shout out PSY. Shout out PSY. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I don't know how you get me started talking about like managing people in general because it's not an easy job. I'm only like, uh, like 
half adult and I can barely know how to manage my life. But it's fun to be able to push people and motivate people to do what they love with their careers. And I think that's what we started with PSY. Um, so let me go back to like the beginning. So we started PSY with the our project called B, uh, Party Party and it started in COVID. So it basically blew up immediately. We had all these girls that were skaters. And usually you don't really see skater girls, right? Mm -hmm. So skater girls that made music with the music producer that was a woman was so different from, like, anything that you would be able to see. So that really hit, and they became viral, like, one day to the other. Instantly. Yeah, literally. So that's how it's all started. And then we 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 realized we wanted to work with more people, more artists that we could represent and like showcase to the world and have also Chloe, Chloe Chidas, um produce. <coughs> Hold on. <laughs> <gasps> hey, cheers guys. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. This is non alcoholic beer, by the way. This is fucking shit. <laughs> no, it's like a fucking white claw. Okay. So, yeah. We did body party. And then Chloe was just like, one day we were just sitting. I think we were like editing a music video for body party. And we were like, we should just get more artists. Like, let's produce other people. And we opened auditions. And people like just came through. And we had responses from literally all over the world that we had to do Zoom auditions to like need all these people and it was so fun like i i know and i have all these contacts saved on my phone number because um they're all on my phone so shout out to everybody that was on psy auditions and yeah what's the main course of this what what's the difference or what are the similarities between you know being essentially when you're doing music videos when you're directing you're essentially the manager of that production in a sense. I mean, I basically manage all the logistics mm -hmm. and the image that they show. So the way that we produce our musicians is that we only we don't only do music for them. We also manage their like visual image. So because nowadays people really base their stuff. Like I was talking to somebody the other day and they were like, people listen with their eyes now. Definitely. You know? Yeah. So n we manage their songs and Chloe produces their music, but I also deal with their visual style and the way that they reach out to people and showcase themselves in, like, the social media and stuff The whole like marketing. That. Yeah, exactly, the yeah. marketing. So when we sign artists, we focus on all that type of stuff. So your label is just not a music label. It's also a marketing label company or a strategic company yeah, yeah it's more of like it's it's a whole project and we usually come up with the projects ourselves and then we find the people that fit right to it kind of like a casting for a movie mm. but not casting for a music project so that you we kind of work created. backwards you, you create the persona and find and yeah. fit the person to it honestly yeah and it's really interesting because we've done it with um stellar and the pistols and for example the pistols is a really good example for something that succeeded in a really long like term type of way because right now two of the pistols girls are touring with like big bands right now in seattle type of stuff shout out lost gods um so yeah we started that band basically with songs that chloe made in like 2016 and we just brought them, it was, what, 2022? And we brought them to 2022. And then we found people <laughs> that could play and perform. And, like, I don't know. There was just, like, an aura that we created around them. So we were, like, 80s girls, rock stars, pop. And then we just, like, showed them the songs. They played them. And then the look was right. And then the energy was right. And then the look... You know, like, the visual part of it was good, so it just kind of comes up like that. I don't know. It really is a different way of cast casting, like, yeah. people. It's a different... It's, I think it's more challenging as well. Yeah, but it's fun, like, because you get to create a whole concept yeah. rather than, like, music. It's like almost finding a singer a and an actor in, in the one body. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. 
which is very interesting. Now, what was your hardest challenge in, in that aspect of creating these images? I mean, at the end of the day, it's all human beings, like people. So the casting, finding the fit. Finding the fit is was easy. Like, we, we are surrounded by artists, like, all the time, especially in Los Angeles. So finding the people was easy. Like, honestly, um, we had our bassist. Our guitarist came. Um, she was our bassist friend. And then the bassist and the drummer. And then, you know, like, just like that. It really just happens um, simultaneously. But... The whole point of it is that (laughs) 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 the whole point of it is that I don't really know. I don't really know what I was saying. I think you're like the whole really point of it. I I started talking about (laughs) each individual and I was. I blanked out, but um. The yeah. the point is to fit the image. In yeah, the, we fit the image because everybody that's around us is always like flowing, and we are for like surrounded with various artists that, you know, just everybody's different, and Talented, there's like yeah. a project for everybody. So even if this project doesn't fit right now for you, we'll probably find one in the future that like. And also meeting them, I guess, and casting them helps you. Like it, it gives you that mindset that you've heard this. Yeah, it's and like it's like a community. At the end of the day, it's like we're all friends, and you're part of this band. You're part of this music project. Maybe you're solo. Like I don't know. Like it's all different types of people. So then, when you're in the writing process of all these like images or, or ideas, as you're writing, you're like thinking, oh, maybe this person probably fits this perfectly. Yes, yes, it's Which exactly. makes the writing or the idea expand a lot more easily. Yeah, and like, yeah, for the Pistols, for example, Mika was a huge inspiration for us. Uh, you know Mika. Mm-hmm. Um, sh- her whole look, like, the way she just, like, existed was, like, perfect yeah. for the band. And then everybody just kind of shaped themselves around her, and it made the image that now we have of the Pistols, which is... So she was a big influence on that. Yeah, yeah. The way they, they look, like fashion, music, like everything is really part of the whole label. That's awesome. Uh, what's it called? Uh, another thing that PSY does is that I've seen are live shows. Oh, yeah. And uh, some of those live shows look pretty fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know that you guys uh, do a lot of shows or did a lot of shows at The Smell, which is a... Is a it's a classic LA venue. Uh, what's it called? I used to go to a lot of punk shows there myself when I was young. Yeah. And so when I saw you guys throwing shows there, I was like, "Oh, damn! You guys got the smell. That's like, like super, like kind of underground. OG, so yeah, like right? it's OG. It's yeah, been there forever. I yeah. definitely feel OG every time you sh- throw a show there. And we got the opportunity to throw a show with the um, Linda Lindas. I don't know oh yeah, yeah, know. the Linda Lindas, the. They're like little the, the Asian girls, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they're so young. Yeah, they're like little kids. It's insane, but they're so popular right now. Yeah. Uh, they we threw a show with them on the Smells 25th anniversary. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. Um but yeah, the Smell is a great place. We love throwing shows because it's just an easy way of promoting our artists and we have like a different variety of people. Like we have all types of genres and all types of like individuals that are trying to show one time like one of my favorite artists dog muscle stapled <laughs> himself on the forehead what the dog muscle is a crazy person i i shot one of his music videos yeah and he is definitely a great character he's, he's, he's insane he's a, in an actual insane person but also, like, I don't know, very relatable. <laughs> like, and, like, like, he's cool. Like, so yeah. He's down to earth. Super down to earth. Which is awesome. You yeah. Know? So uh, what he's saying is deep inside we're a little bit insane. All of us. Yeah. He's a little more insane than... <laughs> than <laughs> a little, little, <laughs> a little more, average. yeah. But uh, as, I mean that as a compliment. Shout like, out Doug Muscle. Yeah. Uh, he literally stapled himself on uh, that, the that, forehead that's in awesome. one of our shows. Yeah. So, we, like, we have all types of performances, you know, like, yeah. all the time. I had a I had an experience with, with Dog Muscle <laughs> when we shot his music video. He took us out to this place where, first of all, you needed coordinates to go. Yeah. Um, it was an abandoned, like, 
military training facility. So there was bullet shells and like bullet holes everywhere. And then what's it called? We went inside of an old abandoned missile bunker. I saw oh, that. Damn. Yeah, and I we saw like. The stories. Luckily, we uh, dog muscle had uh, these uh, lights that were magnetic, so we connected them everywhere, and we actually it looked oh, like a I lit set. Yeah, you remember that yeah, one? No. I even told you like what we the all saw you, that. Shit. How did you light it, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally my first question. I'm like, oh. Flashlights. That's <laughs> awesome, bro. How we did you like, light it? We had like four magnetic lights, and I had my two wand lights. Yeah, and you took my RGB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And my wand. The yeah. wands, the wands. Yeah. Those, those wands, wands come, come through. through. I love we it. fucking love the wands. Those, those wands come through. Honestly, man. wands, like, sponsor us. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, GVC is in it. No, Savage. Oh, Savage, sponsor us. You know, Savage. We'll put Sponsor them all, we'll all over this bitch. We, we love your wands. wands. <laughs> yeah. Fucking awesome, affordable, and they take L batteries, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we got tons of those. <laughs> but yeah, Duck Muscle, awesome. We have all types of performances on PSY. Um, yeah, I don't know. Honestly, the, the label's awesome. We get to know many, many performers around the world, and we get to do projects like in New York, in New Orleans, like, everywhere really because the whole fandom is really out there the internet is huge and you can really connect with anybody that you want there is millions of thousands of people yeah and most of the psy's like famous is because like there's people around like usa that don't have access to the resources that everybody in la has so they're amazed with what we do here you know and that's awesome like shout out to you i wish you were you could be here, but the know? thing about LA that 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 it's like a like a balance. As much as we have the resources, there is that much competition. Oh my oh god! Yeah, yeah. Of course. So, so when you're in LA, even though you have those resources, you got to work twice as hard to make them work for you. And you have to be brave too to like actually do and think it. Think outside the box too. Yeah, like. You can't, like it's not easy to do all these projects that we're constantly doing because, like, you're scared. Like, it's, it's it, it feels vulnerable, and you have to be creative. You have put to put, like, a lot of energy onto it and dedication. Like, we've been talking about this the and whole night. Not only that, but depending on that budget, it's going to determine how creative you could be. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and oh, and resourceful. That, even no matter how resourceful, resourceful you are, how how smart you are about that budget, there will always be a limit. Where even though you have the the idea or the or the concept, it just won't be able to be possible with that budget. Yeah, you know what I mean, so you got to compromise on on your on your ideas or your. I mean, creativity. honestly, though, you'd be surprised of how many people are fucking. I can't. I'm too high. I need, <laughs> I need to speak properly. Go ahead. Proper you don't, you don't English. Have to no more. I need to speak proper English. <laughs> follow, the, follow the mic. Follow the mic. My uh, grammar is like starts getting worse and worse and worse. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I I'm just like when I started doing this, I was surprised of how many people want to be part of it. Yeah. You know, like there's so many people that are just lost. And just come here, try to fulfill a dream, but just don't fucking know where to yeah. start. A lot of people yeah. have that craving. Like something that I've learned over we the years. We all want to fucking do it. Of course. But of something course. that I've learned over the years is that um, people are creative and they don't even know it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's something that you can't teach. Exactly. Creativity, either you have it or you don't. You get me? It's you not definitely have it. And there's something you can't <laughs> teach. So with that being said, like it's about having the resources and the creativity and the mindset to handle it all together and package it into a small deal. Like being able, like Jose's taught me this. Jose's taught me this a lot. Like, yeah, we need this much money, but if we don't get it, we can still do this and that. You get me? And it'll be great. You get me? But it's also, you also have to know how to evolve from that. Because sometimes that takes too much time and you're not getting paid for that time. So, being able to manage a good budget with a great idea and bring it all together is literally a big part of the creatives here in LA because that's how you compete. You know what I mean? And Jose has taught me that. It's a great, valuable lesson. I thank you for it. But I'm still going to be that guy that's going to talk to the client and be like, hey, bring that budget up. Yeah. Bring it up, babe. <laughs> Bring Come it up. On. Bring it up. You want to see Jose at his we best? We always want to bring it up. Bring it up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people really <laughs> come with, like, 
extreme visions and they don't yeah. understand how much it costs and like that's a really huge thing that maybe we should talk about yeah. 50 yeah. bucks you know, that's gonna like, get you your iPhone do you doing really it yourself think, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I've had I have a phone stabilizer so like trust me like I guess I could do a phone music video. But do you want you to? You know, like, no. <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> I've done it before, and, like... <laughs> I have a close friend <laughs> that wants to shoot everything in a black magic, and yeah. I get mad at him. No. I'm like, you're not getting black magic money, bro. Use your fucking Sony. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, like, people don't really understand. That, like, yeah, we can do it on our phones, but, like, let's... Aim higher. Yes. There's you know, always going to be a higher concept, but something unless like unless I really believe in that person, bro. Like I'm like, if you can afford it, that's cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you know, like if you can't, if you don't want to work with it, then it's cool. You can go to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I and honestly I'm like. I'm picky like that too. Yeah, I'm yeah. tired. I'm tired of a lot of a lot of people. You get me, and then they're always like, "Oh, you know, I know so and so," and I'm like, "That's that's, that's amazing." Good. It doesn't pay my go bills. Yeah, ga- <laughs> gas oh. went up. Yeah. Food went up. Yeah. Eggs are expensive, like you get me, like. Mis huevos, bro. <laughs> <Mis> huevos. <laughs> yeah, no, like I was like, I don't want clothes. Thank you, you know. Yeah. And it's just like that. Like I, I got buddies that try to pay me in weed. I'm like, I got weed. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, like it's it's like we really just want to make like good stuff. Don't make shit is the bigger thing out of yeah. this. Like, I don't want to shoot on my phone. And you know? I want to be proud of the work that I do. Yeah. I don't want to have to be like, I did this for you, but I'm going to hide it. You guys <laughs> want to know something <laughs> funny. So, like, recently I've been going out to parties and stuff, and I got this camera in Mexico City, and it's like a, a kid's camera. And it's, like, this small. Mm-hmm. And it takes, like, ugly footage. So every time I take it out and I take videos of it to, like, vlog, people are fucking impressed. Yeah. <laughs> people are fucking impressed that's, by but this. That's, but that's just marketing. And yeah. I'm just like, God fucking damn it. Like, <laughs> this camera has the kitty cap on it. It has ears. Like, what do you mean you like this? Shoot me, shoot, <laughs> hey, shoot me a music video on that. I'll pay 10 Gs. That's exactly. <laughs> you know, it's insane. Like, but, but that's that's ignorant people. You gotta be, you have to understand, everybody's good at their craft. You get me? That person might be a scientist fucking curing polio right now. You get me? But we know photography. We know videography. Yeah. They don't. You get me? And this is what you're really selling, knowledge. It yeah. just hurts my heart. See, like. but there's also a difference between doing it because you have to like i'm and i'm talking about using cheap equipment um like if you have to do it like it's like no nah, don't do it like that but what's it called if it's an aesthetic choice yes then it's different. cool you but get that's me different that takes more planning and you know it's a whole perspective around that right yeah because i mean you got to think about like found footage movies yeah, yeah you yeah. get me like that's a genre and there are i've seen a bunch of music videos that look dope that are shot on it like or, really or, shitty quality or like you know a movie 1889 it was a continuous shot that was the whole concept of the movie one shot one take the whole movie yeah that's but, that, but that that's that's like incredible work. I'm talking be, about no, like I am, I, and I'm not saying it's not. I'm saying yeah. it was a creative choice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's it called? You know, we're in even you could say in punk too, and in a lot of metal stuff. It's a lot of like low budget stuff, but sometimes people did things on on purpose. Right. Like there's a band called Burzum. Well, in in that time, all the <sighs> bands were recording in super high quality studios. Mm-hmm. He was like, "No, I'm gonna record in this cassette player." You get me to just yeah, create yeah, something yeah, new. To so give the effect. Yeah, if you're doing it on purpose, if you're doing it with a purpose, you can do something like that. But if you're doing it because like that's all they can afford, I mean, you can also do that too. But just make sure that the project that you're gonna do fits that vibe. Yeah, you know. I or, mean, how many people are trying to give the effect? Not yeah, a lot of people just put that effect on top of like yeah. good footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, filter. They'd really just be fucking up their footage. Yeah, just yeah. no, that's my effect. oh, dude, I hate that shit. You, yeah, when I give photography to people and they put filters on, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, why? Yeah, why? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dude, uh, you know what those those old uh, VHS cameras have though that none of these other cameras can, uh, unless they're really expensive, can really replicate the zoom. Oh. Dude, those it's old cameras, zoom. dude, they're fucking good. I, but, I, but it's digital like zoom. What, like no, 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 no. They, they have the digital what? zoom option, but you can take it off. It has a but tiny like, manual zoom. Yeah. So and it's lens. sharp and it looks I like, fucking I good. like the zoom. Yeah. I like the zoom. Pineapple. Yeah. I like that zoom too. Pineapples. Yeah. yeah. I, don't like I have the <laughs> HS and I did the zoom. No. Dude, it's but they're fucking amazing. I was, it's uh, true. Yeah, I was in Mexico 
And what's it called? There was some dude just shooting. Air, uh, it was a black metal show, and he was just shooting everything in VHS. And I'm you like, bro, can I play with that? You do black metal every single time, huh? Yeah, I love the black metal. <laughs> no, I mean, I was a, a singer in a band. You get me? That was like, like, I've done a lot of projects with it. And it's amazing that now it's like everywhere. Like, now everybody has those, those, uh, uh, labels that you can't understand. I'm like, bro, that's black metal. Yeah, it's the moda, yeah. bro. I've been yeah. telling you, it's that's the moda, bro. But You're on not, style. <laughs> not everybody knows about this, though. Yeah. There's a lot of posers out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I'm spreading awareness. Shout out to me? the posers. Awareness, stop being a poser. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, what's it called? You could you could do things on purpose, you know. If you, as long as you're yeah. doing things on purpose, you're you're solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hate myself because I'm a, like a modern baby, so it's like I like sharpness, I like HD, HDR, crispy. I know. I, I want to see know. your pimples, you know. I like the grain. Yeah. I'm yeah. a film yeah, girl. You guys are because you come. From, yeah. You got into film. I was always into film unconsciously. Like mm. I didn't know I wasn't. I've film. always been yeah. into film, but he's been to film since the back in the days. The yeah. whole thing. So that's why mm. you like that kind of like style. For me, it's like I want it to be as high as quality as possible. I want it to be as sharp as possible. I want it to be as beautiful and colorful I mean, as I, possible. I mean, I understand that. But I that's a style. I like the sharp. Yeah, yeah, it's a style, and I. I, I think tr- whenever we do sharp stuff, we just do different cuts. You know, like it depends. To me, I like the sharp stuff for social media because it looks great yeah, on your phone. And exactly. then I like like the if I'm storytelling, I like like Quentin Tarantino says like storytelling is a fantasy. Yeah. So you want it to look a little like you portray know, you, dream. Like to yeah, exactly. Yeah. Portray, yeah. You yeah. want to portray a dream. Like you want to feel like you're in another world. Exactly. Yeah. And I completely agree with that. What I'm what I completely agree with that. My problem is I haven't developed that. And that's what I'm struggling with. Because I'm stuck in this sharp, sharpy world that is all perfect and shit. I need to so like, evolve. What are you trying that. to show? Honestly, what I want to, when I, and I've been telling Jose for years, I want to get into horror. Okay. I want to do. Not, it doesn't have to be grunge or anything. Yeah. I like, what? What do you want to fuck say? with your mind? Okay. You I don't want. I don't want to scare you. I want to make you walk away from that movie and make you think for the next three days. That's fair. You know. Yeah. It, it's psychological horror. Make us walk away. Uh, yeah, no, make you walk away and think about it. The scariest movie that I've seen, the creepiest movie that I love, actually, is called Tideland. What's that about? It's um Terry Gilliam. Oh, I movie. love Terry Gilliam. Yeah. Okay, so like that literally says it all, I think. So it's this little girl, and it's like at the beginning of the movie, he literally showcases a scene of Terry Gilliam sitting on a chair and being like, this is a children's point of view and you have to appreciate it as a children. And then the movie starts and it just shows this little girl and her dad and her mom are like addicts. So her mom dies and then her dad dies, but she pretends her dad's asleep. Yeah. And then she finds like, I don't know. It honestly, like, I can't even explain it. It's just a fucked up ass movie and you should watch it because that made me appreciate Terry Gilliam in another whole different way. He's a genius. Uh, s- some of his work is a little a little too crazy sometimes for me. It's just crazy. like to stay in there. It is but, crazy, yeah. But he's definitely a genius and definitely like unique. Uh, what's it called? The uh, Was it 30 Monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it that, it that was he did he did Thirty Monkeys? No, yeah, he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like he's just like out of this world. Every time he does something, it's just like yeah, Brazil, Brazil was fucking crazy. Yeah, um, I don't know. Tiguelo is awesome, and he definitely inspires me in a way that the way like I want to make stuff that's out of this world and people can't really understand. But definitely, you know, like it just. Pushes me there. No, when people ask me, like, what do you want to be doing in 10 years? I always say, like, I want to make artsy movies that only I understand. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's always the goal. You want to set yeah. a trend. You want to set a standard. And some people don't know what that is. Only you do. Yeah. You're well, ahead of your time. Well, da- uh, David Lynch says that in the abstract, uh, more people can relate because people start uh, putting in their own interpretations to things. Mm-hmm. You get me? So instead of your story being just something that's a direct message, What's it called? It's abstract, and therefore, when people are looking at it, they can actually make up their own theories, and therefore, they engage it's with open, the art more. It's open to interpretation. Yes, exactly. And that's an art form in itself. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, Aisha. What? It was been. It's been wonderful having you here. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's always so much. been fun. I love to be here, honestly. And and we're gonna have you again. Oh, okay. Yeah, but we're we're gonna yeah. get closer to that to that uh 
uh, shoot you have in June. Oh, my God. Tell yeah. us a little more about that before we let you off. I don't really want to say much about it yet because it's very private, but I'm doing a short film, and it's going to be intense. And it's coming very soon. And it's coming very soon, and I'm scared, and I'm nervous, but I know I'm going to nail it. You're going to nail it? Yeah. I'll let you uh, know something. My first short film that I showed in uh, that got played in freaking school, mm-hmm. the f- in the first five seconds, a guy's jerking off. Uh, <laughs> yours? Yeah, not me. Well, it was my short film. And show me, please. I, I, I will, I'll sh- right. Yeah, I'll show you after this. It was called Meth Monsters. Show me. What's it called? And um, the the professor was like, "This is genius." Like he was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he's like, "You get it, man. Like you get it." I love that. And other people, bro, who like made shitty movies, bro. Like, and, and no they beef to them, all you know. Making shitty movies. Yeah, though. but a lot of people don't have like original or like a deep perspective about their film, so they're kind of just making whatever. Yeah. You know, uh, they follow a a, a guideline, essentially. They don't make their guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. And then when the professor was giving them constructive criticism, uh, criticism, there was like a guy one time. He was like, oh, so we can have a man just masturbating in the beginning of a movie. And you, you know, like, like, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. Yes. And I was like, yes, fucking genius. (laughs) It's going to make you feel uncomfortable (laughs) right from the start. Yep. 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 (laughs) And it is on purpose. (laughs) Yeah. I love that. No, just like the whale. I love the whale. (laughs) They did the same shit. They did the same shit. Oh, yeah, he does start off with him jerking off. Hey, they got that from me. (laughs) They definitely They watched your movie. (laughs) You never know. Take us off, man. Okay, well, the one thing that I want to say about Aisha or something that we can learn about her is that when you're creating, when you're making something, always put your most creativity into it. Don't be scared. Even if people think it's weird, just go for it. The other thing I learned about her is, like, be brave when it seems like there's no hope. Oh. Because I've been in a few shoots with you, and I'm like, <sighs> but at the end, all those, they're, they're, I've never seen her make a bad music video. They all vanish. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's always stuff been a good turnout at the end of the day, for sure. Exactly. And that's because you keep at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, you're just professional with it. And you don't you don't take things too personally. And you just know, you know, like, now you've become a master at just, like, controlling your environment. Yeah. So, congratulations. I'm glad to see you, you know, like, evolve into this because I yeah. met you at another <laughs> point. But I'm loving all the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I loved it. Even though you guys got me drunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, give, uh, give your Instagram, your handles, how people can reach you. Um, so, yeah, my name's Aisha. And you guys can find me at it's Aisha on Instagram and AishaFernandez.tv on Anywhere, I guess. Thank you. Yeah, we'll put all her links down there. Yeah, they'll be you right know, there. You'll they'll be, be right you'll there. be able to contact her for your next music video. Find which me. She'll it's direct and he'll like say we'll fucking Aisha shoot. AishaFernandez.tv. <laughs> That's it. Beautiful. Period. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, guys. This was another one. It was fun. Goodbye, A7 y'all. Podcast. We'll see you guys soon.